I give you this symbol. I want you to wear it between your eyeball and your eyelid and look at the world through it. I want to do this, and I want you to do what I say, because you are not the crawling blob in that big bucket of ooze which, down deep, you think you are. You are mankind. That isn't the best thing in the universe to be, but it can be. It can be. It will be if you do what I tell you. All I ask of you is that you hear me out. Here is the symbol. What it means is, ask the next question. Every advance this species has ever made is the result of someone somewhere looking at his world, his neighborhood, his neighbor, his cave, or himself, and asking that next question. Every deadly error this species has committed, every sin against itself and its high destiny, is the result of not asking the next question, or of not listening to those who do ask it. Theodore Sturgeon Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Grempel. Today, we're going to completely finish the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1. I've been reading through what I call the Apocrypha, these eight books over here. They were eight books that were chosen for the Series 1, but didn't end up actually being included. Terry Carr, the editor, had chosen them before he had left the company. And after he left the company, these books were simply published, but not published as a Science Fiction Special Series 1. In taking a look at my bookshelf here, we can see the A Science Fiction Special Series 1 all the way up to Barefoot in the Head. That is the first book of what I call the Apocrypha, eight books selected but not included. There were 38 A Science Fiction Specials and eight Apocrypha to make up 46 books. These 46 books are part of my playlist for A Science Fiction Specials Series 1. I plan to move on to the A Science Fiction Special Series 2 from the 1970s and A Science Fiction Special Series 3 from the 1980s. Today, however, I want to just concentrate on the apocryphal books, as I call them. And today, a short review of The Worlds of Theodore Sturgeon, 1972. This is a short story collection. Let's first talk about The Skills of Xanatu, copyright 1956. In this story, we have a representative of a planet landing on another planet. At first, we think he's an explorer. He wants to learn about the culture and the people of this planet. This is a universe that has been populated by humans who've been separated through time. The inhabitants of this planet puzzle him. There seems to be no conflict, and they seem to be able to just will into existence dwellings. There are no huge cities. There's sort of a biological technology that seems to be beyond what this explorer understands. And there also seems to be communication, almost a hive-like communication between the dwellers of this planet. We discover he has ulterior motives here as he researches this planet. Is there technology that they can exploit? Will they forcefully subjugate this planet? Or will they simply destroy the people here? He decides that the technology, this biotechnology, is something that could be really useful to the people of his planet. But he resists. He's a very individual person and he doesn't want to communicate on this hive level that the people of the planet do. Eventually, though, he gives in and discovers a utopia of mind and starts to understand these people more and more. He wants to bring this to his own planet. In this story, we have several levels of revelation. We come to find out what his mission is. We come to find out more about these people and this utopia that they have. And we come to realize that perhaps assimilation is not going in the direction you think it is. I really enjoyed this story. I would give it an 8 out of 10. The next story I'd like to mention is The Perfect Host. This story reminded me of John W. Campbell's Who Goes There, which was the inspiration for the two movies called The Thing. This is more of a horror story where we don't know if there is something that exists 
that can jump from person to person? What does it have to deal with the way people behave and death itself? John W. Campbell Jr.'s story came out in 1938 and The Perfect Host came out in 1948. Although I can see the influence of who goes there, I would still recommend this story as a great study in paranoia. If you like the movie The Thing, you will really like this story. I give this story 8 out of 10 as well. The last story that I want to mention is called Maturity. What if our minds are really immature? And what if there could be a treatment that would give you real maturity? This medical experiment is performed on a person and they start to develop in ways that are unexpected. What truly is maturity? And to a truly mature people, what do the rest of us look like? Once again, we have a short story that is edging on horror. I also give this one 8 out of 10. The problem is, those were my three favorite stories, and the rest of the stories were just okay. So many of the stories are just okay that overall I would give the collection 6 out of 10. This is the problem with short story collections. There are some excellent ones, but then there's other ones that draw down that collection. So I would recommend to you the skills of Xanadu, The Perfect Host, and Maturity. I have two other books of Theodore Sturgeon in my library. One is another collection of stories called A Way Home. It is originally copyright 1955, but this edition is from 1978. And I have one of his novels, More Than Human. And that is copyright 1953. So you can expect a little bit more Theodore Sturgeon on this channel. That does it for the A Science Fiction Special Series 1. In the Apocrypha, I just want to mention that the strongest book to me was Other Days, Other Eyes by Bob Shaw. Highly recommended. I also was very impressed with a lot of the cover art in the series. After Leo and Diane Dillon, we had a lot of covers by Davis Meltzer. And some of these covers are really quite amazing. One of the surprises in this series was the story You're All Alone by Fritz Leiber. It reminded me of The Matrix, perhaps one of the influences for The Matrix. I also think of A Trace of Dreams. It was a one print wonder in my mind. So now that I've finished this journey, I'm looking forward to seeing what the 70s hold in the A Science Fiction Special Series 2. If you're interested, you can subscribe and join me as I continue on in the series, or you can also look at my playlist for the A Science Fiction Special Series 1, where I'll have all 46 novels or collections in there. Thank you for joining me on this journey. As always, please leave some comments about things that you've seen in this video or about the overall collection. Until next time, keep reading.